Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Studio. In this second video, we will be discussing another Code Forces question that is football. I have linked the question in the description below. So, this is the Code Forces Beta Round 77 Div 2 Problem A named football. Have a look at this question before moving any further. Um, as I've already said, the link is in the description. Okay, so the major crux of this question is, you would be given a string of numbers, either 1 and 0, 0 representing the players of first team, let that team be A, and 1 representing the football players of second team, let that team be B. And if there are 7 players of same team standing one after the other, then the situation is considered to be dangerous. So our task is to find whether the given situation is dangerous or not. If dangerous, we have to print a yes or print no. So the logic for this question is uh, pretty simple. Uh, we go across the given string and count the number of players in the given uh, football team. We start and count the players of a particular team and then count until the number of players reaches 7. Let me explain you uh, this process using some examples. Let me have two counters on the either side, each showing the count of number of players in team A and number of players in team B. Let me initialize these counters with 0 and now let's start counting the players. This red player refers to player of team A having a code 0. So the counter in uh, counter of team A increments by 1 and then it increments to 2. And the player green is a player of team B. Hence, the counter of team A revert back to zero because the counter only counts the players of same team standing one after the another. Here, the green team B player comes in between the counting. So, the team A counter reverts back to zero and we start the counter of team B. And again, when the red team reappears the green team counter reverts back to zero and the team a counter starts again with one and then two and again green so team b here we haven't found any counter reaching seven hence the situation is considered to be not dangerous now let's start with the next string given one triple zero triple zero double zero one so we start the counter and the first guy is a team B, so increment the counter of team B, then nullify team B counter and start the team A counter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, when the counter reaches 7, our situation is considered to be dangerous and the pointer stops counting there and uh, returns a dangerous signal to us. Let me explain you with a final example, a bigger string indeed. So let's start our pointer counting team A 1, 2, again uh, we nullify team A and start with team B 1, again vice versa 1, 1, 2, 0 in team B and 1 in team A, again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yes. One of the counters, either of team A or team B, reached the value 7, hence the pointer stops counting and returns a dangerous signal to us. I hope you have understood the uh, following procedure. Let us summarize the logic we have discussed. So step 1, start two counters for each team A and team B and then start counting the number of players in the counters. If the players change, the counter moves back to 0. And if the counter reaches 7, break the process and print yes. So this is a summarized version of the logic we have discussed. Using the same summary we have finalized on, let's jump into the code editor and code on. Um, let me include the basic skeleton uh, to start off with. Um, after including the basic skeleton, uh, let me just check what are the input uh, types. Uh, so you'll be given uh, non-empty string right okay so so let me declare a string first string str let the string name be str and let me input the string okay so as you have seen in the logic um, 
any other uh, okay fine given the length does not exceed 100 characters okay fine okay so as we have seen in the logic summary that we have we need to start uh, the counters each of team a and uh, team b so let me uh, declare the counters so the counters are basically uh, integer variables in counter of team uh, a and uh, that initializes with 0 and uh, team b that initializes with 0 too and uh, let me start the uh, loop the basic process that runs on the whole string and the counter increment okay so okay so there are two things here if the value of string is zero we will increment the counter of a and then if the value of string is one then we'll increment the counter of b so let me check if the string uh, can give any other parameters or only one and zeros so this string contains only characters of one and zero fine so let me declare this if the value of string at that particular index is equal to uh, zero the mistake most people do is they keep uh, equal to equal to zero here this is not correct because we are dealing with strings so the string character must only be equated to a string character that is code zeros and if the string is equal to zero let me increment the counter and else let me increment the counter of team b this is not done yet because when the character changes we need to nullify the other counter right so immediately when a string of zero is found we have to nullify the uh, counter of b so counter of b must be nullified here and in the same way the counter of a must be nullified here and when do we find or when is the case when the counter or the loops should start stopping and return a value for us right so if the uh, value of uh, counter here in the case here if the ca counter equates to 7 then uh, we need to uh, print out a message name being yes and we need to break the loop and come out of it fine in the same way in the else condition that is a condition when string value equals to uh, one the if the counter equates to seven then uh, we need to print uh, c out okay wait so this is not possible so let me declare another variable here int uh, is dangerous id equal to uh, let me initialize it zero first and when it is dangerous let me change the value of is dangerous to one it's a boolean but i'm taking it to be an integer uh, in the same way i have to change it here is divisible uh, equal to one and then break the loop so basically after the loop is broke that is this is a loop for loop then we have to check if is divisible if is Oh, uh, sorry if is dangerous is one then we have to uh, print out a yes or else print a no so if is dangerous is a non-zero or is a one we have to print a yes uh, else we have to print a no so yeah this is a final uh, draft of our program and let's check if it runs fine or not on the given terminal. Uh, wait, I think I've made a mistake here. This is not a comma, this is a colon. Okay, so I've changed this and any of the mistakes, um, no? Okay, let's run it. Let the terminal tell what are the mistakes. Okay, no mistakes. Uh, on running it, so what are the test cases given? Um, let me look here. Let me copy this test case. Uh, yeah, no. And let me try on the second test case. Uh, perfect. So this is working fine. Let me uh, submit this code. It should work well. 
So I choose a GNU G17 and uh, this is like my already submitted code on March 17. Yeah, we were successful in uh, solving this question perfectly. Uh, all right, guys, I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this session and see you in the next video with another interesting question or interesting topic. Signing off, Sayankit Code Studio.